Come on, come on. I'm coming, I'm coming. Look, we gotta get across this big space here. Come on. Give me 10 rounds rapid and cover me across, okay? Well, 10 rounds? Well, 10 rounds rapid. Well, what? Like, like in 60 seconds? No, no, just fire 10 rounds rapid and let me get across this and cover me, will ya? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know that we ever did that, really. 60 seconds. I mean, no, faster than that, rapid. Now. I think we shot 10 rounds, but you know, it was in like 60 seconds, I think. At depot? Yeah. Yeah, but, well, we had a respirator on, so that made it super difficult. Yeah. I mean, it just, t t 10 rounds rapid in like 40 seconds? It just sounds so fast. I don't know if I could aim that quickly. Cause I mean, yeah, I mean, they're over there and I mean, we need to get across here, but I, I just thought that well practice. Do you think we could maybe slow it down just a little bit? Because then, then I'd be able to do it. Even without the respirator. Uh-huh. What, what? Look, are you coming with me or not? Was it something I said? When, in 1939, Britain and the Empire went to war, there would be no singular reliance on the regular army, as there had been in 1914. Instead, the regular army, the territorial army, and other facets were in effect combined into one element, and were moved to a war footing. But the army needed to expand and train a great many men. Things would need to be streamlined and simplified. This was to be the case with range work as well. In this video, we'll explore the first of these abbreviated range courses. This being the 1939 rifle course, found in the book Range Courses War of that same year. For this course, we're going to use the service rifle of the era, that is the SMLE, by then known as the rifle number one. So, here we are at Stone Forest Ranges yet again. In conditions like this, it rarely disappoints. I'm looking forward to the upcoming shoot. For that, tin hat, rifle, and this. Early war battle order. To say that it's not just the least bit in buggering is, well, I'd be lying. It's a great big buggerance. That said, we're here to explore the shooting of Viera, and this is what's required. During the years leading up to the outbreak of war in September 1939, the musketry program of the Army had shifted solidly in the direction of the use of the Bren light machine gun. The ammunition allotted for rifle practices shot by a trained man in his second or subsequent year in the Army was a mere 45 rounds per year. This did not include field firing or anti-aircraft work. In contrast, there were 193 rounds allotted to him for his Bren range work. That said, these 45 rounds were used not for conventional classification shooting, but rather as he was considered trained and had already put in considerable time grouping, snapping, and rapid shooting. It was used for what was termed battle shooting. This was the trained man's annual course, and consisted of multiple exposures of multiple targets, combined with movement and rapid range changes. Suffice it to say that if the allotment was only 45 rounds, then that was the right way to use it. This system was based on a gradual entry into the world of musketry, with recruits and first-year men shooting more conventional grouping, zeroing, snap, and rapid practices. Only once they had demonstrated ability there did they progress to the more advanced shooting undertaken by trained men. Once the army began to expand, conscription being enacted in early 1939, there was a need to streamline musketry training. The graduated program was shelved, and a return to basic conventional shooting was made in an effort to get as many men trained to a basic, though reasonable standard. Shooting was restricted to 300 yards, 
and the suite of targets was simplified. Interestingly, rapid shooting to the tune of 15 rounds a minute was not a requirement. A more sedate rate of 10 rounds per minute was used as the standard. There was also provision for shooting with a respirator. The 1939 Wartime Rifle Corps would serve as the standard for the Army until 1942, when it was modified to a degree. This coincided with a comprehensive rewrite of the entire small arms training series of manuals. The reference for this video is Range Courses War of 1939. It can be found along with many other period manuals at the Vickers Machine Gun website. The link is in the description below and I would encourage you to make a donation. The service rifle of the early war period was of course the number one Mark III. So for these practices, I'll be using my own SMLE. Viewers of the channel will be quite familiar with this rifle as it was used during the shooting of the 1914 musketry series, as well as other projects. It's dated from 1916, but differs very little from any example made during the Second World War. Very much the iconic British and Empire rifle of the first half of the 20th century. The ammunition used in this video is of my own making. It uses a 210 grain cast bullet with gas check. This sits atop 24 grains of IMR-4227. Although it doesn't match the velocity of Mark 7 ammunition, it is relatively close to the marks that came previously. It is extremely economical, and I've had good results with it. Targetry of the 1939 wartime rifle course consisted of the following. For grouping, zeroing, and timed practices, the forefoot or small classification target was used. This had been introduced in the 1920s, perhaps as a target that was easier to shoot well for training purposes. It was bicolored, with gray above and ochre below. There was also a semicircular black 12 inch aiming mark. Scoring rings were positioned at 12, 24, 36, and 48 inches. For grouping practices, a white aiming patch, three inches by four inches, was pasted central on the aiming mark. Only one other target was used for snap shooting. The figure 4A, itself a more modern variation of the prone man figure 4 of Great War Vintage, showed a more modern silhouette of an enemy wearing a helmet. The forefoot classification targets were mounted on hive pattern target frames. These raised or lowered on chains or cables so that the targets could be patched. This also gave the capability to expose the target for a specific amount of time. For snap shooting, the figure 4A was positioned on a handheld stick for presentation above the berm. There were a number of scoring schemes used depending on the practice. For grouping practices, a series of wire rings was used to gauge the size. These rings measured 4, 8, and 12 inches. A grouping of 4 inches gave 25 points, 8 inches 20 points, 12 inches 15 points, and 12 inches with one flyer outside, 10 points. For these practices, it didn't matter where on the target the group hit. For application shooting, the scoring was as follows. The bull was worth 4 points, the inner 3 points, the magpie 2, and the outer 1. Hits on the remainder of the target outside the outer were worth zero. For the so-called timed shoots, the bull and inner were in effect combined, both yielding three points. As in application shooting, the magpie was worth two points, the outer one point, and the remainder zero. For snap shooting on the figure 4A, any hit on the target was worth three points. In shooting these practices, I was, as usual, alone, without a team to raise and lower targets. For anything that had a time constraint applied to it, I've had to rely on a stopwatch to time and signal exposures. For illustrative purposes, I've created digital models to show the various exposures, one of the figure 4A and one of the small classification target. The 1939 wartime rifle course had nine practices in total. These reflected grouping and zeroing work, as well as application or slow fire, 
snap shooting, and what were termed timed practices. Ranges shot at varied from 100 to 300 yards. Now obviously it was not nearly as comprehensive as the battle shooting it replaced, but it did serve as a reasonable if somewhat rudimentary standard. 50 rounds were allotted. The dress for shooting the practices was laid out in the manual. Termed service fighting dress there, this would include battle dress, the helmet, 1937 pattern webbing in battle order, and anti-gas equipment. As mentioned in the introduction, one of the key aspects of shooting in the early war period was the inclusion of anti-gas equipment in the form of general service respirator and gas cape. The large haversack carried at the alert on the chest and the rolled cape atop the haversack at the back would seemingly appear to be somewhat encumbering. They did not disappoint and comment will be passed as I progress through the practices. Practice number one was a five round grouping and zeroing from 100 yards in the lying position at a small or four-foot classification target. With five rounds, load! As with all range practices, the appropriate fire control orders would be used. As I settled in, I already noticed that the gas cape was pushing on the back of my helmet. At 100! Five rounds grouping, fire! In this position, it was the gas cape that proved to be the biggest antagonist. Here, the angle of the body did allow for some room for the respirator haversack. But, as you can see here, the gas cape did roll forward and push on the back of the helmet. You will at once notice that I actually forgot to place the small white aiming patch on the target. I suppose that I was just trying to get on with things. So that was practice one, five round grouping and zeroing from the 100 yard point at this the small classification target. I'm going to go out on a limb here and uh, perhaps link these two high rounds here to the fact that I shot with an unwarmed rifle uh, because the next three landed here in the black at the point of aim within an inch of each other. I'm just going to pretend that anyway, even if it's not the case. Suffice it to say, I consider the rifle to be relatively zeroed. Uh, the grouping, however, needs to be within 4 inches for full points and 8 inches for uh, 20. Uh, full, of course, being 25. And uh, I'll just get my handy dandy measuring stick here, which I've marked off in 1 inch increments. So it's just a sheet under six inches. It's not the best group. Um, I'm hoping that the next practice, however, will uh, definitely be better. That's practice two, which is basically the same practice as number one, except for the fact that the zeroing aspect of it is taken out. That is to say, had the rifle not been zeroed here, the score would have still counted. But in the inter between this and practice two, the outside adjustments would have been made. In this case, I don't think I need to necessarily but proof will be in the pudding. So, as mentioned, those two first rounds made the group a bit larger than otherwise would have been expected. That said, it was well within the 8 inch limit for 20 points. Practice 2 was also a 5 round grouping from 100 yards in the lying position at a small 4 foot classification target. This time, of course, the zeroing aspect of the practice was taken out and this was strictly shooting for the smallest group possible. You'll notice here that the gas cape was becoming increasingly difficult. This was due to the fact that the tapes used to secure it to the back were not long enough to attach it in the regulation manner. After this practice, I did make some minor adjustments. So that was practice two. Five round grouping at 100 yards. So uh, leading on from practice one, the rifle I would say is zero. Uh, although I'm shooting a little bit high. One, two, three, four, five. Just uh, cut the top of the black there. So four rounds 
Measure them out three and a half and oh yeah. Five and a half for all five. So that gives a score of 20 points. Defeat from the jaws of victory yet again. While both I and the rifle are certainly capable of shooting better, I had to settle for 20 points. Practice 3 was a 5 round application from 200 yards in the standing in a trench position at a small 4 foot classification target. Shooting from a trench was an important position, and its pervasive use throughout the course reflected that. It certainly had a lot of it certainly had a lot going for it as a shooting position, as it afforded protection as well as a very stable position from which to load and support the rifle when engaging targets. Now, rather than actually digging a trench, which would have taken an obscene amount of time amongst the rocks and tree roots, I opted for the use of a shooting bench that I had fashioned some time ago for experimental rapid shooting. In particular, the Mad Minute episodes of the 1914 musketry series, as well as the 1942 rifle course, both already published on the channel. You can see in these views how standing in a trench affords reasonable amount of room for the respirator haversack to clear and not encumber the chest to any great degree. Also, the angle of the body caused by standing allows for ample clearance between the gas cape and the back of the helmet. Right, practice three. Five round application this time from 200 yards. So, just to refresh everyone's memory, the difference between grouping and application is the, the grouping practice is it doesn't matter where on the target the rounds land as long as they're close together, and that's what you're measuring. In an application practice, it's where you hit on the target. So this is where the scoring rings obviously come into play. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, yes, the bull at 12 inches is rather generous. Uh, I would say that is around a seven inch group. So. That gives a full points. 20. Just a shade low, but still good enough. My total steadily climbing to 60 points. Practice 4 was a 5 round snap using 5 second exposures from 200 yards in the standing in the trench position at a figure 4A. While we've already discussed the importance of shooting from a trench, while snap shooting from it, Another position, known as the position of readiness, was brought into play. Here, the intent was to remain under the maximum amount of cover, only exposing yourself enough to view the target. Only when the target appeared was the intent to adopt the fire position and engage it. During this outing, I forgot two things that would otherwise have made shooting from the bench a little bit more comfortable. The purpose designed sandbag that rests across the shelf at the top, giving much more elbow room on the platform, as well as a stabilizing brace that would have prevented the wobbling that you can see here. So, practice four, which is a five round snap from the 200 at a figure 4A, or alpha. Well, if you want to use the correct terminology, it'd be four able now, wouldn't it? So, one, two, three, four. Yeah. And I don't know if you can see it because the camera angle, but right underneath there, and I. Uh, I actually went behind the target and looked through the hole to see if I could see my firing point without obstructing or out without being obstructed by the bottom of the, the uh, figure here. And I could, 
So that's got to be it, number five. It didn't even nick. I mean, it was so close. But it didn't nick the figure, so that's one round out. That's three points per hit. That gives 12 out of 15. I really couldn't have gotten any closer with that fifth round and not hit it. Despite a little bit of vertical stringing, it wasn't too bad. This brought my total to 72 points. Practice number five was a five round application from 200 yards from the trench with the bayonet fixed at a small classification target. The purpose of this practice was to give the man some understanding of how fixing the bayonet would change his mean point of impact. More on that in a bit. So I've managed to find a, a good suitable facsimile for a fire trench. It's got a good uh, place to put my elbows, as you can see here with the rifle rested. Uh, it's got a good place to put your feet, and you can lean up against the, uh, the parapet there. So that's got good stability. There's only one downfall. Um, yeah, it's kind of deep. So uh, if I'm going to be losing brass at the bottom of this trench, I am not going to go and get it. As with previous fire trench practices, the nature of the position allowed for minimal interference of the gas cape with the back of the helmet and enough space for the respirator haversack to sit on the chest without encumbering me too much. So practice five, five round application, standing in a trench from the 200. Uh, the purpose of this practice, of course, uh, was to ascertain the difference in point of aim when the bayonet was fixed, which if you'll recall to the 1914 series, with the Mark VII ammunition, there is a considerable difference. But with the older Marks I to VI ammunition, there really wasn't, and no requirement to make any adjustments. That was explored in that series, and because I'm using my, uh, uh, hand loads which approximate the Mark 6 or 1 to 6 rather then my point of aim doesn't really change and that's been the case uh, through the 1914 series as well as here. That said I seem to be just a little bit low. One, two, three, cut the black, four, five. I thought I was aiming up a little bit but uh, I mean literally one more inch would have got a perfect score. As it stands that's 18 points. Literally, if my MPI had been one inch higher, it would have been a perfect score. That said, 90 points at this point felt like a decent score. Practice six was a five round timed shoot with a 60 second exposure from 200 yards in the lying supported position at a small four foot classification target. As you can see here, the man started from the position of order arms. When the target exposed and time started, he was to adopt the lying position, charge his rifle, and engage the target. Although technically a timed shoot, this particular practice was scored as per application shooting, with the bull being worth four points. This particular spot afforded quite a comfortable lying position and the angle of the body combined with the height of the rest allowed for ample space for the respirator haversack to sit on the chest. As you can see here, I was well under the one minute mark at 52 seconds. Right, practice number six, five round timed shoot from the 200, starting at the order. Looks like we got one, two, three, four, five. So, uh, just a shade low, honestly. If I had grouped about two inches higher on that one, that would have been a perfect score. But as it stands, with three outside of the bull, that's a score of 17. All this talk of shooting low is starting to sound a bit like a broken record. Apologies for that. 
Practice 7 was a five round application from 300 yards in the lying position at a small four foot classification target. Well, it's hot, but it's another stunning day on Stone Forest Ranges. Stunning indeed. I only hoped that in shooting at 300, I'd make a bit of improvement over that at the two. This particular fire position probably gave the worst case scenario for the interaction of the gas cape and helmet. It was sighted on a slight downhill incline. And in having to hold the rifle that much higher and bring my head and eyes up, the back of the helmet really was being pushed forward by the gas cape. So that was practice seven. That's a five round application from 300 yards. Well, it doesn't look like that was uh, my best effort, but here we go. One, two, three, just cut the black. Four, and wow, five. So uh, four, three, two, that is a total of 17 points. Wish I could get that one back. At least this time, the grouping wasn't too low. And despite the rather stressful position of aiming downhill as well as the gas cape in the back of my head, things turned out okay with 17. Practice 8 was a 5 round snap with 5 second exposures from 300 yards in the lying, unsupported position at the figure 4A. I managed to find a slightly better fire position here, which wasn't quite so downward sloping. That really did make all the difference. As with other prone positions, the respirator haversack on the chest feels at times like you're lying on a big stone. I included the uncut version of this particular practice to, sh to demonstrate the rhythm that a practice such as this would actually have. Unlike the previous snap shooting practice, here the firer could be in the aim and did not have to engage from the position of readiness when the target appeared. So that was practice eight. Five rounds, five second exposures, one round per exposure from the 300 at the figure 4A. So one, two, three, four, five. Decent hits, still a little bit low. Uh, I'll take it, that's 15 points. Finally, a decent showing. And a perfect score in this practice was a welcome addition to the total. Practice number nine was one five round timed exposure of 60 seconds from 300 yards standing in a trench at a four foot classification targets, wearing a respirator. As mentioned earlier in the video, the threat of chemical attack was enormous, especially at the beginning of the war. That said, ever since the Great War, shooting with a respirator on was an integral part of a man's annual qualification. While the donning of it was not timed as part of the practice, it did provide for some other difficulties, as we shall see. Gas! Typically, the man would have in the neighborhood of nine seconds to pull the respirator from the haversack and place it on his face. The general service respirator was itself an improvement over the earlier small box respirators from great war times. As much as my example was serviceable and decontaminated against any asbestos infiltration, it did provide for some challenging aspects during this practice. Like the earlier practice featuring snap shooting from the trench, this practice began from the position of readiness.
I made mention that my respirator was relatively serviceable. This was in reference to its constituent parts being present. Various components, though, were somewhat lacking. Most importantly, the lenses. I'll pass comment on those a little bit later. The elastic that held the face piece to the head was also in dire need of replacement. While not preventing me from wearing it, it didn't really hold the face piece tightly to my face. You can see throughout this practice there's a certain degree of constant adjustment as I line up the lens so I can see the sights correctly. Gas clear! As is evidenced by the big black smudges all over my face, the rubber of the inside of the face piece was also decomposing to a degree. All in, I did finish with a few seconds to spare. Right, practice number nine. 10 rounds from 300 yards at a small classification target with a respirator on. I can safely say that the condition of my general service respirator uh, as used here is markedly inferior to the condition of my lightweight respirator which was used in the 1942 rifle course video. Yeah, those lenses are horrible. Regardless, I was able to find just the slightest, tiniest part of the lens that gave a relatively clear picture. The rest of it was all fogged up and, and uh, had residue on it and all kinds of stuff and I could not get it clean. So I found a little space and I had to crane my neck a little bit to make sure that that space lined up with the sights. Regardless, uh, results not too bad. Um, the scoring for this, of course, is as per a rapid shoot, that is to say the ball and the inner are both worth three points. Let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, ten. So, I guess not too bad. I missed uh, one point there and two points there. From a total of 30, that gives me 27. I think it's safe to say that it looks worse than it is. 27 points out of 30 really isn't that bad of a score. This brought my total score to 166 out of a highest possible of 190. On the subject of badges and awards, the manuals present a somewhat muddled story. In 1939's weapons training, it shows provision for the award of the usual crossed rifles for rifle marksmen. It also says the conditions for award are to be found in the appropriate annual course. When the 1939 wartime rifle course manual is examined, it becomes very clear that there is no reference to even a scoring standard that must be attained with either the rifle or the Bren. 1942's weapons training does offer some explanation. It references the clothing instruction of 1941 in saying that there is, from that time on, no provision for the award of badges. So this begs the question, what was the case from 1939 to 1941? Quite simply, I don't know, and I don't have a copy of the clothing instructions to consult the language used therein. By all means, if you know of a reference, please let me know in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed that presentation of the wartime 1939 rifle course. Now, it was not perhaps quite as complex as earlier or indeed later versions, but it served the army for the first half of the war, bringing its men to a reasonable standard. At the time of the production of this video, the 1942 rifle course has been published on the channel for quite some time. If you're interested in a comparison between this shoot and that, there's a link to the 1942 course in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel, please stop by our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. And for more information on projects and updates between videos, follow us on our Facebook page.